Ladies and gentlemen, nerds and neckbeards, welcome to another edition of, of Westeros Weneverly. 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 Hey, Dave. Tana. All men must drink. Oh my God, did we drink already? Oh, we did an unprecedented thing tonight. We uh, took a video. Oh, we took a video of our pregame shot. We did. We didn't take a video of us shooting the shot. No, because it was on fire, so it would have been hard for us to both video, put out the fire, and do the shot. That's right. And be in the shot. That's right. We don't have a professional studio. We did this <laughs> with my cell phone. But I will tell you this. If you want to do our pregame shot with us, yeah. pause now. Yeah. Go to the description yeah. of our write-up at warrior.podbean.com. I can check tell you out, what it is. Or check so out our tweets. It is our, we're calling it the Flaming... Lightbringer, all right? That's right. And it is equal parts Bailey's Irish cream and butterscotch schnapps and a dash of the leftover gold schlager that you have from uh, the Golden Company episode when you guys drank along with us at home. That's right. You should just have a dash. Some. Yeah, you should just have a little bit left over. Shake all of that together over ice and fill up two uh, shot glasses, leaving just a little bit of room at the top where you will. Pour slowly on a spoon uh, your Bacardi 151, okay? Because you're going to be lighting that Bacardi 151 on fire. On fire, Tana? On fire. Oh my god! <laughs> and then, as an added pizzazz, because this is, after all, the flaming light bringer, yep. okay? Then you need to sprinkle uh, dust, if you will, the open flame of the shot with cinnamon. And don't do what I did, which was spill cinnamon all over my countertop. <laughs> I think you were like, oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. Got it all over the countertop. All right. Yeah. Well, the highlight of which you can see on the video, on which the video. I'm sure we'll post somewhere. Yeah, we'll um, post it in the, in the podcast yeah. description on war.podbean.com, and we'll also post it, uh, I'm sure on, both of us will Twitter it. Uh, We'll tweet it. I'm sure you'll be we'll able to find it. this what do we, silly what do we video say? of us. T twat it, yeah. tweet it. Tweet. I'm, I'm already, we did Twitter two speak. of these shots because yeah. we did one for the video. Yeah. I'm already feeling it. I know, me like, too. 151 is no joke. So uh, remember to blow out the flame before you shoot it oh, you yes. know, up to your face. Yes, do not let your so, beard but, uh, on fire. The cinnamon kind of like sparkles, right? Like it yeah. lights on fire and so it has this like... Um, firecrackery effect, you know, and so it's like this the cinnamon actually ignites. It's yeah, a it really pretty, sweet. pretty thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's smoky and sort of a, a dark, milky color. But so. so, why did we do Lightbringer shots? What we, is what is today's episode about? Today, Dave, we're going to talk all about Valyrian steel swords. Oh my god. Ding, ching, 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 ching. Those are production sound yeah. effects of us. Clanging obviously swords we're, together. Obviously, we were sword fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah obviously. Got it. <laughs> but remember, don't cross the streams. <laughs> don't cross swords. Don't cross swords. <laughs> don't don't injure ever, yourself. Don't ever cross swords. <laughs> yeah. Somet sometimes you come into a rare occasion where you have to. Yeah. But I, yeah, I, I don't recommend mind. violence. Yeah. So put your swords down, everyone. Oh, I was talking about a different kind of sword. <laughs> what else are we drinking, Dave? So well, that was our shot. So that was our shot. So then we kind of decided to make some. Uh, Blue steel, yeah. blue Valerian steel yeah. uh, drinks. Obviously, because we still have five gallons of blue curacao, yes, um, which I can't stop bringing up because, <laughs> well, we have five gallons of blue curacao. Because who has five gallons of blue curacao? Dude? Yeah, well, we and do. We still have it. Like, well, we still, do. We both poured it into our drink tonight, and it is down a quarter of an inch. Like the handle, a blue curacao is down meh, a negligible amount. We've been drinking it for almost a year. Yeah, like, this is. We should take a picture oh, of so where we it should. is. We and should. We, yeah, we'll see that we should mark each episode, maybe. Like <laughs> it'll just time. be a constant, like a. It'll just look like way. somebody colored in the side of the bottle <laughs> with a marker. By the time we're done, it'll just be. Oh my god. Ugh. Oh. My okay, god. so back to what we're oh, drinking so what now. Are, yeah, what are our drinks? We're drinking a little bit of Tito's, a little bit of Soco, yeah. some pink lemonade, yeah. some blue curacao. Yeah. And that's about it. I and think. Uh, I put a, a dash of lime juice. Oh, on the you top put a of dash of lime juice. Because so called lime, you know. Yeah, so called yeah. lime. You got it. And so we have right. a nice, refreshing, uh, bright blue cocktail. And in the bottom of it, if I had those little like plastic swords that you get sometimes, that, yeah, like, little cocktails, then I would have put one of those little plastic swords 
through the maraschino, the bright red, heart red maraschino cherry. Some some places in, give you little umbrellas. Yeah. Some places give you uh, swords. swords. Some places give you both. But in this case, you want the sword. Yes. Get go for the sword. Yes. For this episode, particularly ask for a Valerian steel You're gonna sword. You're going to pass it right through the center of the heart of the maraschino cherry in That's order right. to unlock the magical abilities. Of that miniature sword. Right, that's how you yeah. make Lightbringer. That's right. Yeah, pass it through the heart of your wife. That's right, Dave. Oh my god. <laughs> what a ridiculous, ridiculous story. What is your, before we really get started, what's your okay. favorite Valyrian steel sword? If you could have any of the swords. Oh man, I mean, I think a long claw is pretty fucking awesome. Yeah? Right. You're all I about mean, that bastard blade. It's pretty good, yeah. but I think. Personally, I'm yeah. more of a two-handed claymore kind of guy. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with ice. Yeah. I mean, all the right. thing is huge. It's badass. Like, not in all the MMORPGs yeah. that I would play. Like, I just run around like with it's a big ice. ass bed sword. Yeah. yeah. I'd have to go with ice. I'm Dark Sister all the way. Yeah. Dark Sister. That's my blade of choice. You see, can you tell me more about Dark Sister? Yeah. Because now I have another sword for Stump Dave. Because yeah, I know you're gonna ask me. You know I am. I know you're gonna ask yeah. me to name all the swords. Yeah. So, you know that that's the number one question. So, I have a couple others, but yeah. that's the number one question. Man, I'm and, not gonna get it. Yeah. Uh, so Dark Sister is one of the two uh, Targaryen family ancestral swords. Okay. The, Do we know where it is today? We don't. We don't know where any of these swords are. Or very few of them. We don't. Well, I guess maybe we know half and half based on the list that we've got of the swords. But this one in particular, and black, and the other one, which I'm not gonna spoil for Stump Dave. Damn it, which one is that, Tana? <laughs> uh, we don't know where either of them are, but, but you know, we could have a good guess about it. Okay. But uh, Dark Sister was Visenya, the older sister, uh, married to Aegon Targaryen the Conqueror. Mm -hmm. he, he married his two sisters. The older one was Visenya, the younger one was Rhaenys, right? It was Rhaenys. And both Aegon and Visenya had swords, these magical, amazing Targaryen swords. And the other people that have also had Dark Sister throughout history are Daemon Targaryen, the rogue prince. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my boy, um, Bloodraven. I was just about to say, I'm pretty sure Bloodraven has a sword, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, right. and so the last time that we ever see Dark Sister is with Bloodraven. Mm. At least as far as I know. So, that's my pick. All right, all right. What can you tell us about Valyrian steel, Dave? All I can really tell you is that, you know, you need an expert yep. craftsman to, to you know, meld it. Yep. And it's very, very hard to work with. And it comes from, you know, it's the hardest steel in the land. Yeah. It's the sharpest steel in the land. It holds can, the edge better than any other blade. That's right. Blade. I think uh, I remember Most some like quote that said, said something, it can chop a man from neck to nave or Ooh. something like that. I don't, like, yeah, uh, I don't remember that. With an ease of ease yeah. of something. For Wait, some reason, neck to nave. When John is using long claw, he like cuts one of the wildlings. It's, it, it slices through uh, chain mail and leather and, you know, boiled leather and flesh. And it's just like cuts through it like butter. Yeah. So there's one so of those descriptions. If you have a Valerian steel sword, uh, not only do you know you have a Valerian steel sword, but you're like a pretty kind of a big deal because mm -hmm. there's not that many left. Yeah. Uh, they, I believe, they're they not came, making any more of them. They came from old Valeria, right? That's so, right. Um, That's correct. I believe, Valeria before the doom. I believe, if uh, my memory serves me correctly, yeah. uh, you they don't make any new ones. The only way you can make a new one is if you melt down an old one. Yep, but so. but there's a caveat on that. Only there's only one place in the world that can rework Valyrian steel. No place can make Valyrian steel anymore. But it, like in the case of ice, mm. where it got repurposed That's into right. two swords, uh, you need the secrets and the spells that are only known in one part of the world, which we could transition to some tape. Do you know what part of the world that is? Well, I would say Old Valeria, but it's not. It's not. So I'm going to have to go with... Uh, doo -doo 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 Here's a hint, doo -doo -doo -doo. and it's okay, not going to help you very much, but maybe oh. it'll help our friends at home. I mean, maybe it will. I don't All know. Right. Gendry's master, if you remember Gendry's master's name... He is the one in King's Landing that melts down ice and turns it into the two swords for, for Tywin. 
and he comes from the place where this is known, and he knows the secrets and the spells. What is his name? What is his name? That's a very that's a right? really good question. Oh my god! Yeah, and Gendry names him a couple of times, you know. And so I'll take either the first name or the last name will count as a point. I'm gonna have to go with Mir. No, but that's a good guess. Oh, yeah, okay. it's Cohor. Cohor. Yeah, in Cohor, the Cohoric uh, are the only ones that know about it, uh, how to rework the secrets of Valyrian steel. And Tobo Mott, or how how do we pronounce his name? It's Mott is his last name, but his first name is Tobo or to Tomo. So Tom, uh, Tom Tywin Tom. Lannister actually sends the sword. No, he works in a forge in King's Landing. He's oh. a Cohoric. Uh, okay. you know, spellbinding blacksmith. So and you don't have to be in Cohort. No. But the Cohoric are the ones who know the, That's right. the secret. Okay. That's right. And actually, there's this um, wonderful thing um, which I can find. Do you... Uh, you don't know where it is. Yeah, it's on page uh, 352. It's 259. Oh, damn it. Cohort is the only place left in the world that still knows how to work Valyrian steel. Uh, and it's rumored in the world book to include blood sacrifice Ooh. yeah so if you have your world books turn to page 259 who does tywin lannister bloodly right? sacrifice and to so, make two valerian steel yeah. swords it says cohoric swords knives and armor are superior to even the best castle forged steel of westeros and the city smiths have perfected the art of infusing deep color into the metals of their work, well, producing armor and weaponry of lasting beauty. Perfect example of the Tywin yeah. Lannister swords melted from kept, ice. Yeah, and he kept trying to put red. the red in there, yeah. and so it looks like smoky blood, yeah. which I thought was so cool. Uh, only here in all the world has the art of reworking Valyrian steel been preserved, its secrets jealously guarded. And then we have this insert here on the next page, that says, Maester Pohl's treatise on the Cohoric metalworking, which was written during several years of residence in that free city, reveals just how jealously those secrets are guarded. He was thrice publicly whipped and cast out from the city for making too many inquiries. The final time, his hand was also removed following the allegation that he stole a Valyrian steel blade. According to Maester Pohl, the true reason for his final exile was his discovery of blood sacrifices, including the killing of slaves as young as infants, which the Cohoric Smiths used in their efforts to produce a steel to equal that of the freehold. Hold on. Yeah. Do you think the guy who bought Vars yep. to cut off his nuts and Ooh. sacrifice them yeah. was a Cohoric spellbinder? Was he making maybe a it was Valerian? A blood maybe it was, is that a blood sacrifice? I like where your mind's at. You know, is he making maybe like a yeah. super powerful Valerian steel or something with Targaryen yeah. blood? I or mean, something? my my inference from this yeah. is that they're sacrificing like it's a maybe. So a blood sacrifice doesn't have to be that you sacrifice your whole body. Like you don't have yeah. to die. Yeah, right. That's what I'm you saying. Can sacrifice. He chopped your, off the guy's nuts. Yeah, that's a pretty big sacrifice. Root stem and all. Yeah. And I like threw it into a fire. That. Yeah, I don't know, man. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why that popped into my head. It well, must be the alcohol. And yeah, I mean, and because it was awful, and it's one of the like great mysteries of the world, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So blood sacrifice is a big part of this whole, and I thought that was interesting, right? And it Just seems like the maesters are completely against it. They're like, <laughs> they're like, oh, you discovered what they do over there? <laughs> yep, you're dead. And this guy, fucking, he gets his hand removed that following or what? the allegation. So like, he really talk about suffering for knowledge. What's like, the, what's the deal with that? He's don't ask too many questions. Yeah, when you're a cohort guys. Are, are the maesters hiding this skill? <laughs> do they, are they trying to preserve and prevent? this from happening? I don't know. Or? I think this guy was out studying, right? He's on his, he's studying abroad Yeah, in a, get that. in a violent city, right? And he's trying to figure out what's going on, how you make Valyrian steel, because it's been gone from the world for hundreds of years. Yeah. And he asks too many questions and gets beaten in public three times. And then he... he beaten in public by the cohort. Yep. They said, you're an outsider, he, we're not teaching you these things. You ask too many questions, then he discovers that blood sacrifice is involved, so they chop off his hand. 
oh, this is the cohort that exiled him, yeah. not the maesters. No, no, no. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. no. That they exiled the him from the city. Gotcha. Uh, the cohort kicked him out of the city, this maester, and, uh, and he lost his hand. Because he asked too many questions and discovered blood sacrifice. Maybe they used his hand as a blood sacrifice. Hey! Maybe they were like, hey, now you're going to find out what it's yeah. really like. Uh, Shoom! God. Like, you know what scene I love? Um, it came out like... Well, you know when it makes sense? The, he, the, um, the, the, the Robin Hood one where, what's his name? Men in Tights? Uh, no, the, the one that that's based on. Prince of Thieves. Oh, okay. Kevin Costner. And he, like, puts his hand, you know, down. And he's like, cut off my hand, you know? And then he's like, he grabs the armor. He's about to lunge the scimitar and he pulls the guy. And, like, his, you know, jailer gets his arm torn off instead. Okay. That's a great scene. I think we're already drunk. Uh, yeah, oh, well, yeah. the 151 is already taking hold. <laughs> it's taking hold. But, so, what I'm, what I'm getting at is, yeah. maybe he discovers the blood sacrifice, yeah. and maybe he tried to do it himself, and he sacrifices a hand. Or he steals the Valyrian steel sword so he can study it. Maybe, but, and then what? They cut off his hand, and they use it to rework that Valyrian steel sword? And we're making they mountains bl- on now, molehills. Yeah, now we're just getting crackpot on us. Uh, so, so when did Valyrian steel swords first start coming over to Westeros? Wait, is this Stump Dave? Are we into Stump Dave Oh, yet? should we? We could just hop to, to Stump Dave. Should we just hop right into yeah, Stump Dave? Yeah, let's hop right into Stump Dave. Let me see what I got here. Another edition out. of Stump Dave! I don't know why I did... I'm, God, I'm drunk. We I'm obviously ready. need... Uh, a producer yeah, we to need, make like, sound, sound effects. effects. Yeah, we totally do. <laughs> we can make our own sound effects. We don't Clearly. need anyone. Okay? We're so good at sound effects. Oh god. Okay. Uh, let's see. Stump Dave is somewhere in my All right. notes. Pick one of your eight pages. Yeah. Where is this? Where is Stump Dave? I don't know. Uh oh. Uh oh. Part at the seams here. There's no. There is no Stump Dave. There is. So Stump Dave is name as many of the Valyrian steel swords that exists in the world that you can, here's the caveat, you get one point for every sword correctly named. Okay. And if you name one that I have not already, that's not on the list, wherever the list is, then you get 10 points. All right? You're going to get 10, like, here it is, bonus points if you get something that's not on the list. I need to ask you a technicality question because I am an engineer, so I live on technicalities. Bring it on. Can you name ice? Technically, it's not a sword anymore. Yes, ice right? counts. Anything, ice counts? any Valyrian steel sword that was mentioned anywhere in the text. Okay. Because, you know, we could mention Dark Sister, but it's missing. We don't know All where right, it is. Right. It could be melted down. We don't know. All right, so I'm going to name the four that I know off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Ready? Oh, do, I need a little marker so I can mark them down. In the drawer. Okay, go ahead. All right, let's see. We've got Dark Sister. Oh, yeah, obviously. you got that one, yep. All right. Yeah. There's. Don't try uh, to cheat by looking I'm at my I'm trying notes. to cheat. I'm trying to read your notes. Okay. There's Dark Sister. There's Ice. There's Oath Keeper. Yep. There's. Oh God. What did Joffrey name his? Yeah. Sword? What was the other one? Oh my God. Lions <laughs> Breaker or something like that. Lions. So my question is, you're thinking of Lions Tooth, and I don't yes, remember. Lion's tooth. And I don't remember if it's Valyrian steel. I know he's bragging about it, and he has his own sword. I think it's a normal sword. Uh, I don't think it's Valyrian steel, because later he says to Tyrion, I'm no stranger to Valyrian steel, and Tyrion's like, that fucking dagger. He knows about the dagger. So I don't think his, I think his sword was normal. But uh, Lion's Tooth is on the list, but it's not a Valyrian steel sword, but it's a sword I wrote down, so you do get a point. All right, all right, I'll take a point, I'll take a point. But what did he name the the other... That's oh, right. Oh, man. It was some Bastard's Breath or something like that? Very Why close. do I think that's You're the name of a You're going with the onomatopoeia. Yeah. It's uh, uh, WW is the clue. W. Do, w. Do, 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 well, I'm going to just skip that one for now, and I'm going to go... Uh, oh, Widow's one. Well. Widow's Whale, that's Widow's right. Widow's Whale, yes. Uh, okay. your favorite one? Uh, Long Claw. Yeah. Well, I said ice already. That's yeah. my favorite one. Long Claw. Um, There's another know. one in House Lannister that's been lost. There's another one in House Lannister that's yeah, been lost. Yeah, their ancestral sword that oh. was lost. There's also uh, the Sword of the Morning. Who oh, we just there was Dawn, right. Dawn. Yeah. And do we say Lightbringers of Valerian Steel Sword? We didn't Steel say sword, that yet. Yep, but, Lightbringers on there. Um... Wow, I knew more than I thought I did. Yeah. Um, 
There's two, and this is a this will be an interesting one if any of our audience knows it. There are two that I found in the Iron Islands. Really? Yeah. One of them is like a hero sword in House Greyjoy, which interesting. Yeah, right. You wouldn't think that they. Well, I mean. So, uh, let's see. There's also one for House Corbray. Mm. Do you know who? What that is? There's one, Lord Randall Tarley has one. Do you know what Sam's dad's sword's name is? No, Sam's dad has a yeah, sword? Sure does. Oh, man. You just have to lay them on me because yep. I think that's all, right. all I got. So we You've get... officially stumped me. <laughs> well, you got one, two, three, four, five, six correct. Six Valerian steel correct? Yeah, six Valerian right. steel correct. Yep. All right. uh, I'll so... take it. We also have, so we had Dark Sister, which was Queen Visenya's blade, okay. and then King Aegon the Conqueror's blade, of course, was Blackfire. Oh, Black, which of course. Gets, right, bestowed yes, of course. to the Blackfire, Damon Blackfire, and he starts the Blackfire Rebellion, right. blah, blah, blah. So it's the name for the sword. Uh, Lord Randall Tarly, Heartsbane. Heartsbane. I knew, I did know yeah, that. I've heard that one before. Uh, yes. Five centuries old. Yeah. Uh, been in his family a long time. Uh, Le Sam was nervous. He held it a couple of times. He's talking to John about Valerian steel blades, mm -hmm. and he was nervous he was going to cut one of his sisters with it. <laughs> Sam, you're so precious. Poor Sam. Uh, House Corbrays is Lady Forlorn. Oh. Yeah, and she is the one that is fighting with Damon Targaryen. Um, Gwen Corbray is, you know, fighting with Damon with Blackfire. And they keep clashing and they can't kill each other. And then finally he, you know, beats him and he drops Lady Forlorn or whatever. And then uh, Damon Blackfire dismounts to make sure he can see a maester. And that's when Blood Raven crests the ridge and kills and his kills half brother. Yeah, that's and right. ends the Blackfire Rebellion. Uh, so that's Lady Forlorn. Interestingly about that blade, uh, it sometimes gets lent out instead of always going to the eldest son or, you know, heir. It'll get lent out to a cousin or a son. In this case, Lynn Corbray, the younger son, uh, has it. For what purpose? Why does it get lent out? Um, Did they have to bring it back? I what think, are the terms of this lease? I know. In his Are they paying for depreciation like a car? I think there was a, a fight maybe. I don't know if it was the Nine Penny Kings. It couldn't have been. That's too far. Maybe Robert's Rebellion. They were using it in like... His uncle got struck down, and Lynn Corbray picks up the sword mm -hmm. and keeps fighting with it, and like never gives it back. So <laughs> it's my it sword gets. now, bitches. Yeah, and so I think they know that like eventually it'll go back to like the main house, but while he has earned it, he gets to keep it. Okay, okay. I think that's the deal. In the Iron Islands, if you guys check out on your world book on page one eighty nine, you can read about the Red Kraken. Uh, quote: By the age of four and ten. Dalton Greyjoy had sailed as far as Old Gis, fought in a dozen actions, and claimed four salt wives. His men, he was 14. He had four salt wives. At 14? At 14 years old. God damn. Yeah. His men loved him more than could be said of his wives, for he tired of women quickly. His own love was his blade, a Valyrian steel longsword he had taken off a dead corsair and named Nightfall. And uh, now Sir Harris Harlaw, one of Asha Greyjoy's friends, has it and like oh. shows it during their king's moot. And it's a very small like passage, but it's also in contemporary times. But so their like ancestral sword, sword is there. Yep, of it's Dalton a... Greyjoy is called Nightfall. What about the Red Kraken? The the um, so that was the Red Krakens, oh. and that's uh, and now it's for Sir Harris Harlaw. I don't know how it got to him. And there was also another guy during the King's Moot called The Drum. Just The Drum walked up the hill to make his claim on his own two legs or something like that. And he's wearing a Valyrian steel sword called Red Rain. Yeah, which makes me think of heads being chopped off. Yeah. Uh, let's see, the Cat's Paw Dagger was on my list because it's a Valyrian steel blade. But it's That's the one that Tyrion uses or... Peter Baelish uses yeah. to uh, try to assassinate yeah. uh, Bran. Yeah, plain looking. It's got a dragon well, bone Well, it's got a dragon bone. Yeah, I was going to say. And it's a Valyrian steel dagger. Yeah. So that's also on the list. And then uh, what else? And Bright Roar is the ancestral Bright sword. Roar, yep. yes. The Lannister one that's lost. Yeah. 
So those are all the ones I think that are on my list. Ice is great is a two-handed great sword. Uh, the only great sword that I know that it was Valerian Steel. All the other ones yeah. are like single-handed. Dawn, you know, I think. Was Dawn a great sword? I think so. I think Dawn, which gets its own whole page on 239 in your world book. Dawn gets its own full yeah. page. It gets its own. Look at this. And there's this beautiful illustration. Look oh, at that that's, fucker. That's a two-handed great sword. Yeah, that's Absolutely. a two-handed great sword. And it's called Dawn. And it's... Sword of the Morning. And it's unlike any other Valyrian steel blade. It says this. Sword of the Morning. And this picture is of this very majestic looking knight. Uh, and it's... He's obviously in the sands of Dorne. The sun is setting behind him. He's holding a a sword that's as long as he is. Like, that's five feet, six feet. Yeah, it's a huge it's sword. It's a huge sword. He has another sword on his hip. Like, yeah. a normal sword, a dagger, and then this and giant fucking sword. <laughs> He's ready for battle. <laughs> he is. Uh, it says this. The Danes of Starfall are one of the most ancient houses of the Seven Kingdoms, though their fame largely rests on their ancestral sword called Dawn and the men who wielded it. Its origins are lost to legend, but it seems likely that the Danes have carried it for thousands of years. Most are only like around for a hundred or uh, up to five hundred. Um, I think ice is a replica sword and it's only been around for four centuries. And then things like Heartsbane and uh, another one I have written down are like five hundred years old. Mm. But, you know, this says thousands. Thousands of years old, yeah. So it's the oldest one we know about. Um, those who have had the honor of examining it say that it looks like no Valyrian steel they know, being as pale as milk glass, but in all other respects it seems to share the properties of Valyrian blades, being incredibly strong and sharp. Though many houses have their heirloom swords, they mostly pass the blades down from lord to lord. Some, such as the Corbrays, right? have done, may lend the blade out to a son or a brother for his lifetime only to have it returned to the Lord. But that is not the way of House Dane. The wielder of Dawn is always given the title of Sword of the Morning, and only a knight of House Dane, who is deemed worthy, can carry it. It's for this reason that the Swords of the Morning are all famous throughout the Seven Kingdoms. There are boys who secretly dream of being a son of Starfall, so that they might claim that storied sword and its title. Most famous of all was Sir Arthur Dane. So throughout the thousands of histories of this sword, Sir Arthur Dane, who we know, right, in modern times, yeah. is the most famous wielder of this sword. The deadliest of King Ares II's Kingsguard, who defeated the Kingswood Brotherhood and won renown in every tourney in melee. He died nobly, with his sworn brothers at the end of Robert's Rebellion, after Lord Eddard Stark was said to have killed him in single combat. Tower of Joy? Yeah. Uh, uh. Burr, burr, burr. Go check out our episode on the Tower of Joy! Oh, wow. Whoa. That was, what was good, that? Right? that was a good one. That was yeah, good, that was yeah. Good. Good. Uh, let's see. Lord Stark then returned the dawn, the sword, to Starfall and to Sir Arthur's kin as a sign of respect. Like, that's a whole page in the world book with this picture and this, like, thing that lays out how special and dapper the sword is. And that's, like, all we know about it. And we know it's still around today. Yep. It still exists. It's not like, you know, this mythical sword yeah. is lost to Where's eternity. Where's Dark Sister? Where's, yeah. Bla where's Blackfire? Where's, yeah. you know, the original ice? We where's don't know. Bright Roar? Yeah, yeah, where's Bright Roar? Off in fucking smoking ruins of Valeria. Uh, yeah, man, so... Maybe they're in Dosfothrak. Now, based off the rack, we have... Yeah, that's what I said. We have, um... <laughs> uh, what did we call them? Flaming Lightbringers are Flaming a hell of a light... drink. Oh, my God. I highly recommend you do two of them, just like us. <laughs> You'll be able to follow this yeah. podcast with impeccable <laughs> precision. Yeah, then you guys try to talk to each other about stuff at yeah. some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh... Rabble, 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 rabble. Where were we? We're still doing Stump Dave. Oh, we're still in Stump Dave? Oh, yeah. my. Oh, yeah. But this is uh, a rambling episode. It is. If they always are. Oh, yeah, here's yeah, a good true. question. Okay. Uh, what, what link of the Maester's Chain, Ooh. right? What does the Valyrian Steel Maester's Chain link symbolize? 
There's red gold and yellow gold History. and silver. Nope. Damn it. It uh it it represents that you have studied the higher mysteries, which oh. is another way of saying magic. Magic. Yep. Magic. And Maester Lewin had studied it. He had a Valerian steel link on his Maester's collar. And he's talking to Bran about it. And that's where we first hear about like glass candles and stuff. How big are these links, do you right? think? Because like, like uh, in my mind, yeah. like when I'm reading it, I think of like this huge yeah. lunking chain. Like huge. Right. Like, I agree. Like I couple totally inch agree. long yep. links. Yep. I that's agree. what how I read Not it. Not like a little decorative, like sometimes you wear like a chain around your neck yeah. as like a piece like of jewelry. Like if you're a Guido or something. Yeah, Guido. Yeah. It's not you a Guido those, like, chain. Like silver chains. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. not a Guido chain. This okay. is like This is this, like a thick This is like pulling your boat out of the water kind of chain. All right. All right. Okay, yeah. good. Because that's how I imagined it. I wanted to make sure we're on the same page. And I think that they describe the Grand Maester uh, as always having like many loops, like it loops several times around his neck. Yeah. You know, and the more, and I think that that's interesting imagery. The more you know, the more you're weighed down by your knowledge. There's got to be some sweet spot of like knowing and ignorance that we ourselves are in, Dave. Yeah. Between, but right. you're not getting choked out by your knowledge, right? But you're, or you're not so lacking knowledge that you Think. choke, you know, you can't breathe, but then you're also not weighed down by your, uh, Volume of knowledge, the heavy weight of your burden. I like it. Yeah. Hardcore symbols. We went deep with that one. We did. Went we did. Deep. Uh, second question of some Dave. Okay. The Wait, third actually. Third question. Yeah. Okay. We can count. Yeah. Okay. Who, which Archmaester holds the ring and rod and mask of Valyrian steel? So uh, there's only, like, they all get together in their conclave, and one has the ring and rod and mask of red gold, and one has it of yellow gold, and one has it of iron, and, like, So that's, like, the highest of high? That's yeah. the highest on high? So it's, like, whoever's page. in charge, what is that called in a college? It's, like, uh, you're the chair the dean, or something. The, chair, the dean. The dean. The dean, dean of that particular... Of I want to say it's Merwin. It is! Yeah. What up? What up? You didn't stump me this time. <laughs> Archmaester Marwyn holds the ring and rod and mask of Lyrian steel. Yeah. I knew that. That guy's a sneaky yeah. fucker. He's got dragon glass candles and shit. He's a, he's. Yeah. I'm man, excited that, to that see guy what is, happens with his adventure. If that he gets guy to DMing. is. Uh, Do you think he'll interact with uh, Tyrion? That would be cool. I hope so. Uh -huh. Speaking you know of what? Speaking mm. of what you hope to see, yeah, yeah. All right, a little bit of Game of Thrones in the news. Okay, yeah. Do 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 do. We Game of like Thrones little... in the news. In the news, news, news. Okay, that's our good intro. I like that. <laughs> We're gonna have to remember that. It's gonna be totally different next time. We're not gonna anyway. remember anything from this. Podcast. I read an interesting... Did you see our flaming shots? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, God. okay, go on. We're totally off our rockers. <laughs> I read an interesting article today on the interwebs. Yeah? I forget where. It was just one of those, right? like, came up in Reddit, in the yeah. subreddit. Okay. Um, the uh, spoilers, everything, yeah. if you didn't already catch that. The Game of Sick, uh, the Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Game of Thrones Season 6 showrunners. Yes. Um, uh, had made this comment that uh, right now, the it's going to completely diverge from where George R. R. Martin yeah. is going to go. That they are actually going to be two separate entities. There are going to be some familiar, some similarities. Right. right. Um, but they said, you know, it, it is its own beast at yeah. this point. To so, my mind, it's not even, it doesn't even resemble the source material anyway. Well, yes, that's but true. It did make a lot of, it did make a lot of divergence. Unnecessarily. Well, let's just I leave mean, it, it's its own beast. Yeah. So... You, I am going to force you to watch all of season six. <laughs> After you watch them, and though, because I can't not talk through the entire thing. I can't. I physically cannot. Yeah, that's I fine. I physically cannot. Maybe we'll do not talk. Through maybe it. we'll do commentary yeah. through it. Okay, I like that. Yeah, that we'll watch be, it together. We'll watch it together like and record special, it. Spe yeah, special. I like it. Special editions. edition. Special edition Westeros whenever we leave. Tana's hating on episode whatever. That's right. <laughs> special edition. Tana, Tana hates episode one. <laughs> Season yeah. six, episode one. Tana hates episode <laughs> season six, episode two. I, I I got into Archer, and this season that I just oh, got on is yeah. Vice, okay. and so it's sort of the same thing. So this thing. is after a rampage. Yeah, so this is like you know, so it's sort of like our main show, but the Vice version of mm -hmm. it. So it's a special edition. Yeah. Wow. We may put out a lot of episodes when that starts. <laughs> 
Anyway, you had a point though. It what was in the news? They said it. That oh, is that it's going to diverge. It was going to diverge. So the reason what the reason. Do you know any big spoilers about it? No, I don't want to know any big spoilers yeah, about it. I no. mean, even the show, like I can hypothesize of where things are going based on yeah. the books and based on this. But in all honesty, like. I, I'm I'm in it for the wonderment at this point. I yeah. want to know what happens. I love this world, man. So, I love yeah, this it's world. so amazing. Yeah, and he does such great things. Like anyway, we won't. We don't need to gush. Uh, here's a the. Final. We're already blushing because we're drunk. I know. Well, I get uh, I get red in the cheeks. You when get I drink. Asian blush. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not Asian, Dave. I know, but I'm just saying. I'm Irish. So, so why can't same. you hold your alcohol better? Well, I, I hold it fine, but my body is just like cheersing. It's very, it's like celebrating the fact that there's more alcohol. Yeah, in there. yeah, okay. it's genetic, I believe. <laughs> the alcohol <laughs> it gets is the in... celebration of my people. So what did you do for St. Patty's Day? <laughs> I went to Brogues down in uh, uh, Lake Worth. Oh, okay. I think. Yeah. Anyway, so I went out drinking with friends, and I got nice. to do a car bomb. Thank God, with my friend Missy. You've never done a car bomb before? I have. I'm pretty sure we've you've done met car my bombs. Girlfriend. You've met my girlfriend, and she's not really a big drinker. And yeah. so when there's a holiday, first of all, I listen to Irish music all the time. Okay. That's, I'm unabashedly like happy about this. Yeah. I have a CD of Irish music on in my car right now. So it's like my thing. And then everybody gets together and gets to like drink and wear green. And Do you have corned beef and cabbage? No, because I listen. I didn't. My mom probably made it back at home. Yeah. But I'm not gonna make corned beef and cabbage for just myself. We went to Patty Max and Where oh my is God, Patty it's, Max? Uh, there? Over that way in gardens. Yeah, I was gonna go to yeah. O'Shea's, but it was the boat show and we couldn't park anywhere. O'Shea's, I heard, was ridiculous. Yeah, I that bet. Place, well, that they place were gonna have weird. live Irish music, which I'm all about. There, I, I love so, O'Shea's. I do too. And so I was so excited. So my friend Missy came up so we could hang out. And we weren't able, we like drove all around and it was super busy because it was St. Patty's. Yep. But it was also super busy because they had the boat show. So there was even more people in town on the water taking up all the parking spots. So anyway, typical, we went to a less, a less crowded Irish bar. Okay. And had just as good a time. And have you ever had a, a half cider? So it's Stella Artois makes a cider. Okay. And so you do half Stella, the beer and half Stella the cider. I feel like we've done half beer, half cider we on have, the show. But it's a, but we did like half stout, half cider, a snake bite. Yeah, for our, that's uh, right. our sand snakes episode. That's right. That's but right. But this was just like I never had it. It was very good. Oh okay. And so it was a pale beer. But anyway, so last question for Stump Dave. Oh God, we got so sidetracked. Okay, Stump Dave. What else Dave. is made of Valyrian steel besides swords and daggers? Go. What else? Yep. Well, we have uh, links. Yep. From for the ma Macer's chains. Correct. We've got I guess the rod and ring and mask. Mm -hmm. Right. What uh, else? Can you can armor. you think of anything else? There's some armor. I don't know of any Valyrian steel armor. Well, they said it could. They, the world book at least there was a passage that said it could, oh, make, yeah. armor could make armor of armor deep better. colors. Yep. And would last a beautiful Here, lifetime. Here, let's do true or false. True or false. Okay. An arak can be made of Valyrian steel. True or false. False. True. Ding, ding, ding. Really? Kago's, Kago's Arak is made of Valyrian steel. The Dothraki have yeah. Valyrian steel yep. sword? Yep. And the, wow. I'll prove this, or I, I can back that up in a second. Also, can a horn doo -doo -doo, be made of Valyrian steel? Well, based on the fact that this is uh, <laughs> true or false, I'm going to go true. <laughs> true. Dragonbinder, the horn, is banded. With red gold and Valyrian steel, yeah, but it's I don't covered know if all the over. Horn is made yeah. of Valyrian steel. I guess the horn it's is probably the... like a yak horn, like a chauffeur. <laughs> it's probably a dragon horn, Dave. It's probably a dragon horn. Yeah, exactly. A horn from a dragon. <laughs> that's my impression of blowing the shofar on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. One of those. That's a Jewish thing. I don't know what that. I thought you were doing like Ricolo. Well, yeah, that no, that's Yoda. That's... <laughs> well, it's a long horn, but I guess yeah. it's not like a sheep horn. Or something. Yeah, exactly. And then finally, last one on Claw Island, there is an axe that is made of Valyrian steel. Okay. So I thought that was interesting. 
And the reason that I know this stuff is because... Um, yeah, how do you know this stuff, Tana? Yeah, so I've been going through all my books and, like, reading. And the idea of going through and finding... I know. Is that what you do with books? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. The idea of going through and finding every mention of Lyrian Steel okay. is horribly terrifying, right? Yeah, is there so many of them? So, Kirsten, I asked her, I looked at her, she's always reading books all the time, and mm -hmm. she'll download new books every day. Um... And I was like, I have a question for you. On your iPad or tablet, can you search in your book for all the times, let's say, Valyrian Steel is mentioned? So like Control F? And you can. Oh my god. And so... Your research just got so much quicker. <sighs> like, <laughs> it's off the fucking explosion. hook, man. So, so I spent last night looking up every instance of like... This one in particular, my last search was for the mystery night because I was, you know, I was going down the rabbit hole here. I need to read that, by the uh, way. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, but this was, like, I was looking for the mirror Reed and Jojen story oh, that they okay. were telling Bran about the mystery night. But you can look up Valyrian Steel, and it shows you every single time that it comes up and what chapter. I mean, probably everybody knows about this, right? Like, yeah. I'm I was going to say, party. if only we one. had, like, technology that could look things up for I us. I know. So <coughs> last night... Computers. <coughs> for last night, for 35 bucks, I downloaded every single book in the main oh, series okay. that I can now search by word, and it's awesome. It's awesome, which so, everybody knows. So, yeah. you know. so are you going to search for wor the word and then go back to your books and then highlight... The yeah. physical books and then write on them? Well, so, sort of. Or do you have those, did, like, little post-it notes that, like, stick out on edges? What I've been doing in my world book is writing down everything on the, like, the family trees. Family tree pages, yeah. And oh now, my God. starting yesterday, I started writing down when people die. Like, Aegon the Fifth, the Unlikely, dies at Summer Hall in 259 after Conquest. Because I kept trying to think, like, when was the, you know, this happened? When did Summer Hall happen? Whatever, whatever. Um, when did old Nan come to Winterfell? You know, when okay. was that? Like, all this. Um, and so I've gone through Lannister stuff, you know, and I'm writing down whether, you know, so this person, Rowan Weber, appears in the Night of the Seven Kingdoms. The and she was, yeah, she was 25 and she was, you know, born in 189 or whatever it was, uh, you know, based on my math and mm -hmm. different pages that cross reference stuff. So these are like my nerd glory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to uh, take pictures of that and scan yeah. it. And don't it's, uh, lose your world book. I wanted to George R. R. Martin might need it to finish the story. If you guys are interested in doing this, yeah, he will. <laughs> uh, George, call me. Email me. Westeros Wineverly. At Tana Ford. <laughs> at Gmail. At Gmail. So, in the, so, Valyrian Steel Swords, before I downloaded the books, I went looking, you know, how early in the books, I thought to myself... Does Valyrian steel show up? It's like the first thing because ice is the first sword we encounter. It is in the sixth paragraph of it's it. The book starts, you know, how it has like chapter one, so it's only half a page. Well, the if first thing you get is one, the prologue right. with the White Walker, but right. there's no sword there. And then right, and then the, the first, first thing real chapter of the book is Ned Stark six, chopping off a deserter's six head. Tiny paragraphs. And Valyrian steel sword is mentioned, or what Valyrian steel is, is mentioned. Here's what we get. Uh, before it is mentioned, these are the other major things that are mentioned in the other five paragraphs. Okay? The book opens strong, my friends. This guy knew where he was going. He mentions others, half-human others, wildlings, Mance Raider, the king beyond the wall, Old Nan, the children of the forest, the Night's Watch, The Lands Beyond the Wall, Winterfell, The Long Night, and then Valyrian Steel Swords. Things that are mentioned after that, King Robert, The Seven Kingdoms, Summer Wine, River Run, Targaryens are mentioned after Valyrian Steel. Like, Valyrian Steel is huge. Do you know how many blades there are in The Seven Kingdoms? How many of Valerian steel? Yep. How many, uh, like, heirloom swords have been chronicled by the maesters? Fifteen. Two hundred and twenty-seven. Holy crap. Yep. There's a lot more Valerian steel swords than I thought. Yep. And they started trickling in right after... So they've been trickling in for a while uh, before 
septons came on the scene. Uh, mm-hmm. The first men didn't really keep records. They carved runes into stones. So everything Sam at one point says to John, everything we think we know is just translations of runes. So we're probably missing a lot, you mm-hmm. know, in translation, whatever. Um, but, but what was I saying? The um, what was I saying? The first men. Oh yeah, they, number of swords. Oh, so so a couple of swords had come over. Like Dawn, we know yeah. is a couple thousand years old. But once the citadel at Dragonstone is built by the Dragon Lords, that's like when the floodgates open and more swords start entering Westeros. Interesting. Uh, yeah, still not enough, you know, for the people that wanted them, but they started coming over in, you know, more, like they started coming over more, like often. Where? Oh, from Old Valeria. It said, yeah, it says this on uh, page 26 of the World Book. Um, no king opposed them, and though the local lords of the Narrow Sea made some effort to resist it, the strength of Valeria was too great. With their arcane arts, the Valerians raised the citadel at Dragonstone. Two centuries passed, centuries in which the coveted Valerian steel began to trickle into the Seven Kingdoms more swiftly than it had before, though not swiftly enough for all the lords and kings who desired it. And although the sight of a dragon lord flying high above the Blackwater Bay was not unknown, it occurred more frequently as time passed. Valyria felt its outpost was secure, and the dragon lords thus continued their schemes and intrigues on their native continent. Oh my god, I just had a ridiculous thought. Tell me. What if Valerian steel mm-hmm. is made from dragon poop? <laughs> well... Something must be made of dragon poop, right? <laughs> Why waste any part of the... What I if mean, it fuels, what if it's like the fuel for the fire? Yeah, like you have, to use the, the forge. you have to use the dragon poop Burns to... Burns hot. Yeah. Yeah. And it melts normal oh. steel and infuses it with yeah, dragon fecal... I don't know why I always go directly to poop, but <laughs> you, poop, I really do. Yeah, the butthole, the butthole door. Butthole of the ire? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Let me see here. The drawing is still on our whiteboard. I know. With a little like coming out of it. Yeah, imagine that's a dragon <laughs> and the and the people are harnessing it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see here. I have a bit oh, so I mean more likely it's made of like dragon bone or you know, the fire is breathed from the dragon's breath or, or something maybe, along yeah, those lines. Or maybe, yeah, maybe you needed, like, but, your dragon to, uh, to just leave its fire. dragon fire yeah. to melt well, the steel. you know. And, and they are spellforged. Right. So this is how you make it on, on page 15 of your world book. This is how you make what? Valyrian steel. They tell you how you make it? The properties of Valyrian steel are well known. Dragon poop. It says dragon poop <laughs> right there on the, on the page. There's a big, there's Holy a, shit. On the left side, there's a gorgeous illustration of, of a dragon, dragon shitting. <laughs> it's, a, it's a gorgeous illustration of a dragon there's shitting. Nice, yep. And then there's all the people shoveling the dragon oh shit my into God. the big furnace. How did I know this? This you're is just, ridiculous. It's, yeah, you're just a very talented I'm man, just, Dave. oh my God. Yeah. Uh, oh. It's the result. So the properties of Valyrian steel are well known. And they're the result of both folding iron many times to balance and remove the impurities and the use of spells. Of iron. Or at least of using arts we don't know to give a natural strength to the resulting steel. Oh man, they're totally folding in dragon poop. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking telling you. Those arts are now lost, though the smiths of Kohor claim to still know the magics for reworking Valyrian steel without losing its strength or unsurpassed ability to hold an edge. The Valyrian steel blades that remain in the world might number in the thousands, but in the Seven Kingdoms there are only 227 such weapons, according to Archmaester Thurgood's inventories, some of which have since been lost or have disappeared from the annals of history, or have been melted down by the war criminal Tywin Lannister. Tywin Lannister. Yep. Took a great replica of Valerian steel sword yeah. and made it into two puny, well, yeah. things. Where, actually, there was a, let's put my new toy to work. 35 bucks, man. You Money mean, well spent. You mean Kristen's toy? Yeah, it totally is. You know what, what, is she, is. what is she doing at home right now without it? Uh, she's probably, she said that she has everything also on her telephone machine. Telephone? So, you mean, yeah. you mean smartphone? Yep. Yeah. 
So she's got all of her books that telephone she's reading. Telephone machine. Yeah. God. It's her telephone machine. I get it's it. It's not really a telephone. It's yeah, a telephone machine. I get it. I get it. Do you see, do you see where I'm going I, You know what? I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Okay. I'm, I'm smelling what you're stepping in, and what you're stepping in is dragon poop. All right, because someone's so trying to make to... some Valerian steel swords up in this business. Yeah, I have to find the thing. The trouble is when you search for Valerian steel, it yeah. comes up with like 40 million of them. Oh, uh, so you're trying to figure out which one exactly it is. Yeah, but I remember. Let's see. Here it is. Oh, you found it? I think I did, yeah. That's not too bad. Here it is. Okay, uh, let's see. That's too much sword for Joff, Tyrion said. He will grow into it. Here, feel the weight of it. Do you want to read it? Oh, yeah, sure. Nice. I like reading it's, things. It's all like dudes anyway, but okay, it's all about the... Where this are we is, starting? So, like right there. And it's all about, hmm. you know, so Tyrion walks in. Before we even know what's happening or that anything has happened to ice. That's too much sword for Joff, Tyrion said. He will grow into it. Here, feel the weight of it. He offered the weapon hilt first. The sword was much lighter than he expected. As it turned it in his hand, he saw why. Only one metal could be beaten so thin and still have the strength enough to fight with. And there was no mistaking those ripples. The mark of steel that has been folded back on itself many thousands of times. Valerian steel? Yes, Lord Tyrion said in a tone of deep satisfaction. Yeah. At long last, father, Valerian steel blades were scarce and costly, yet thousands remained in the world, perhaps two hundred in the Seven Kingdoms alone. It had always irked his father that none belonged to House Lannister. The old kings of the Rock had owned such a weapon, but the great sword Bright Roar had been lost when the second king Tommen carried it back to Valeria on his fool's quest. Yeah. He had never returned. I know. I think he got ransacked by pirates. Yeah, he probably did. I don't he think. I mean, I don't maybe think it's caught the sorcery. grayscale. You think he caught grayscale and just maybe. kind of became think, a stone I man? I think he got. He, I think what he caught was mutiny because no, none of his own men that he sailed over there with would go into the ruins. Mm. So he had to like hire like Sell free or free rowers or whatever they're called. And if I'm a free rower, I'm gonna row you out into the ocean and then take everything that you're that you're worth because he sailed over there with a lot of gold and shit. Isn't that crazy? That is nuts. Let's see, yeah. Tyrion, and Tyrion wonders where the metal for this one could come from. A few ma master armorers could rework old Valyrian steel, but the secrets of making it had been lost when the doom came to Valyria. The colors are strange, he commented as he turned the blade in the sunlight. Most Valyrian steel was gray, so dark it looked almost black, as as was true here as well, but blended into the folds was a red as deep as the gray. The two colors lapped over one another without ever touching, each ripple distinct, like waves of night and blood upon some steely shore. Like, that's some baller writing right there. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm, I just imagine what that sword looks like, and it's scary. Yep. Yeah. Imagine someone charging at you with a sword that looks like it's doused right? in blood. You're like, that shit has been through people. It's coming from me next. Yep. I am running the other way. Yep. And then he said, uh, you know, there's no other... So he says, a crimson sword might flash prettily in the sun, but if truth be told, I like these colors better, said Tyrion. They have an ominous beauty, and they make this blade unique. There is no other sword like it in all the world, I should think. There is one, said the armorer who bent over the table and unfolded the bundle of oilcloth to reveal a second longsword. And here's the description that we get of Oathkeeper, which is gorgeous. So, you know, I was reading through this stuff last night, and I'm like, oh, this is breathtaking. You had, like, a little, uh, little uh, moment with it? I was like, a little sword envy, maybe? A little sword envy? Yeah. 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 I was like, nice runnels. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrion put down Joffrey's sword and took up the other. If not twins, the two were at least close cousins. This one was thicker and heavier, a half an inch wider and three inches longer. But they That's shared. What she said. <laughs> yeah, Jamie. Oh man. <laughs> but they shared that same fine, clean lines and the same distinctive color, the ripples of blood and night. Three fullers, deeply incised, 
ran down the second blade from hilt to point. The king's sword had only two. Joff's hilt was a good deal more ornate, the arms of its crossguard done as lion's paws with ruby cloths unsheathed, unsheathed. But both swords had grips of finely tooled red leather and gold lion's heads for pommels. Magnificent. Now I, I looked, if you guys are on our Podbean site, the picture that's up is a fanning out of all of the Valyrian steel swords that I could find images for. Oh, okay. And I was paying particular attention to the to the pummels and the hilts and like the gilding. Ice is a very plain blade based on the one that the actor uses in the show. Right. Um, but then like that description of Oathkeeper and Widow's Whale is gorgeous. And there are some really, really good pieces of art out there. Uh, but I had to essentially choose very simple ones, you know, very straight, clean lines. Mm -hmm. But I think I have, uh, I managed to get ice. We can take a look what you got. Bright roar. I got we bright roar. We have the power. Out. Yeah, check it out. Uh, and so they're all like flamed up. Oh, and if you guys are looking at the at the picture, we inverted the shot in the drink. So the flaming lightbringer drink is actually a shot, and the Valyrian steel shot is actually. Our drink. All men must drink. All yeah. men must drink. Almost done here. Oh my yeah. god. And that's swords. And uh, I love that Brian, when she has Oathkeeper, Jamie says to her, you'll be hunting or protecting Ned Stark's daughter with Ned Stark's own sword. And I was like, that's so awesome. Yeah. And oh, and I had a Lightbringer flaming in the, in in the, the middle. center there. Yeah. 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 I like how you put them against the game of the Iron Throne. Yeah, yeah. right? You yeah, think there's yeah. any Valyrian steel swords in the Iron Throne? <sighs> Maybe a couple, because he went up against a lot of kings. Yeah. And just kind of bundled folding. those fuckers yeah. together. I think it's, I don't want to say his name right uh, wrong, but I think Mark Simonetti is the one that did the illustration of the, of the Iron Throne that's the closest to what it actually looks like. Like the throne that they used for the show and that they tore around with is way too small. Uh, when you think of and read about the hundreds of thousands of swords that they carted back to the fledgling King's Landing to turn into that yeah. seat. And it's just like a monstrosity of towering awesomeness. So anyway, it's a very cool idea have all your victors yeah imagine that like everyone you beat down. everyone you beat and it's just like yeah let Hard me take luck. a souvenir it's yeah. kind of almost like uh yeah i feel like some tribes in the amazon used to like take ears as yeah, yeah. souvenirs or something but yeah. taking swords and then being like yeah yeah i'm sitting on this bitch yeah. and then huh. you could never as a ruler have a comfortable seat and uh it cuts people that are unworthy like yeah. there's just so much to love in this yeah. world I'm excited for Winds of Winter, but I also like that we get to go through, you know, the parts of it that we like and talk about it together. Yeah, I agree. I love our little podcast. Is that the end of Swords? It might be. Let Are me... we the done? Are we done with Swords? <sighs> Let me check. Do you have anything else that you wanted to talk about? Oh, man. Oh, we hit all of my fun ones. <laughs> I mean, Kago. what was, uh, did, so, yep. um, mm -hmm. let's talk about Longclaw for a second. Yeah. Um. Heathen John... And uh, Davos Fingers, who I love, they're always saying, you know, John, every time somebody says something to John, he's like, I'm a, but I'm a bastard. Yeah. You know, it's tough. <laughs> and I'm like, of course, he even gets his, like, but it's a bastard sword. It's so yeah. great. Well, um, it was made for someone's son. Oh, oh yeah. House Mormont. Yeah. It's uh, the ancestral blade of House Mormont, whose words are, here we stay. Here we stay. Which is such a weird thing for the words to be. Except that Bear Island was won in a wrestling match. So maybe they won it back from like the wildlings or something. And so the Mormons are like, if you put fuck you in front of their words, then maybe like that's their <laughs> whole... <laughs> fuck you, here we stay. <laughs> that's like their whole attitude. Can, can we add in bed to the end of all the words? Uh, Let's see here. Growing uh, strong in bed. Tyrell. That's good. Unbowed, <laughs> unbent, unbroken in bed. <laughs> that's great. Ours is the fury in bed. We do not sow in, in bed. bed. Yeah. Winter is coming in, in bed. bed. That could be a... Uh, that's uh, like, no, that's like lesbian bed death. Oh my god. That's Fire and blood in bed. 
Oh my god. Hear me roar There's a first hit. This is this great. Is a pretty good one. It totally works. It's pretty good. Yeah, that totally I like works. It. Hear yeah. me roar in bed. Send us your favorite ones, yeah. everyone. Uh, tweet us at Wari, W4RRI, or at yeah. Tana Ford. Yeah. Uh, tell us which yeah. ones you want to hear in bed, or yeah. what's your favorite words in yeah, bed. Yeah, your favorite house words. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's... Or any words, you know. What is dead may never die in bed. <laughs> uh, what is dead may never die in bed. Yeah. <laughs> you, is your love oh, life dead? Oh, no. Well, it won't like, be... It won't that's be. the half-human hybrid. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. may never die in bed. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> and there are so many stories of, like, people dying mid-copulation. You oh, know, my like God. That's... A big thing. Yeah, awesome well, plum hey, guys. if you die like uh, <laughs> mid orgasm, it's not a bad way well, to go. Well, and I then guess, right? of course there's the the red the red kiss, the kiss of oh, death. Oh, the kiss of life. There's yeah. the kiss of life. Remember Melisandre's gonna. Bring oh, she. That's John. right. She bur She well, also she birthed some <laughs> shadowy figure. Her yeah. yeah, her shadow kiss or whatever it is. Yeah. What are some other house words? Oh, uh, let's see. We've got. Um, give me some house words right. in bed. All right. Give me some house words in bed, please. <laughs> well, uh, what's her name? Rowan Weber's was fire and sword. Fire and sword in bed? Yeah. Eh, that's not bad. Fire could be a redhead, and the sword is, well, we all know what a sword is yeah, in bed, yeah. so. Okay, I'm know. trying to find. It's a penis. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Sorry for anyone who didn't realize where we were going with that one. Oh, oh my god. I think that the, the world book only shows, yeah, it only shows sigils. It doesn't actually show. But there's a wiki page that has uh, everybody's, like, house words. That's too much work. Oh, everyone um, look up your favorite words here's in, a, in bed. Here's one. The send one, one that us. we can end on is the Tully words. Do you know what they are? Uh, <laughs> no, I forget. It's going to be super gross. Something wet. Family, duty, honor, in, in bed. bed. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen, nerds, nerds and nag beards, <laughs> thanks for listening to a exceptionally drunk episode <laughs> of Westeros Whenever League. Yep. Go check Take out, our, out video. our video on YouTube yep. of our flaming shots. Yep. Go hit up uh, Tana Ford and At Wari. Yep. Uh, tell us your favorite anything whatever okay. tell us all the mistakes that we made <laughs> in this episode I i'm wanna... sure there are a lot yeah um i uh yeah i have anyone something. else you want to give a shout out to no i want to i want to chat at you about a theory i have but we could do like are we a, taking it offline yeah but we could do like a davos after dark situation Ooh. we could do westeros after dark so if you guys are done talking about swords we'll talk to you guys later see you later thanks for listening and remember ladies and gentlemen all men must drink Okay, keep it going though, because this is the thing I want to say to you. Well, do you want me to keep recording on this? Yeah, let's just keep recording on the main one. Yeah. So if they stick around, they get All to right. hear it anyway. All right, well, so I was researching, Kirsten was teasing me yesterday because I was supposed to be researching swords. And I couldn't get around the fact that old I'm man. I'm still trying to picture, like. Yeah. A lesbian researching swords. It's, it's like, easy if I, you take it at a literal face value. <laughs> I have trouble. I'm Tana, we yes. drank so much. <laughs> we didn't, it was hours ago. It was fuck that, it wasn't hours ago. So listen, I, I was uh, I was researching swords and I don't get through one page of notes. Yeah. Before I have this giant question. Who is, is old, old Nan? Nan? Who is old Nan? Who's old Nan? Are we going to have to do a whole episode on old Nan? We might, because I found really interesting things about her. I was supposed to be looking up swords, and I noticed that she was mentioned before Valyrian Steel. Yeah. Right? Like, right. old Nan is mentioned before Valyrian Steel, before the Seven Kingdoms, before Targaryens. Old Nan is mentioned. So she's listed in the appendixes as a storyteller. And an old woman. Do you know if she's still alive? She is still alive. Where is she? She's at Win. Well, I guess we don't know if she's still alive because she was at Winterfell. And, and where then... did all the women get carted off to? Uh, Skagos? Is mm -hmm. she in Skagos? No. Where is she? I don't know where she is. Ramsay took all the women and serving folk of Winterfell to the Dread Fort. Oh. So we don't know if she's dead. But she's listed as being at the Dread Fort. Okay. And um, 
Ned says something to Catelyn, like, uh, you've been listening to old Nan's stories too much. She was old even when I was a boy, right? And Bran, in one of his chapters, says that old Nan, her children, were, she has a son that was killed in Robert's Rebellion. Okay. Okay, two sons that were killed in Robert's Rebellion, and then a grandson that um, had been killed, yeah, okay. Uh, that, hold on. There was a, a and a grandson that had been killed, um, and I thought, no fucking way. And we're gonna leave you with that, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Maybe the next episode. Yeah. On we'll old talk Nan. about old Nan, or don't. You can send us your theories if you want to, but I have a whole big theory. Uh oh. I know. Bye guys. Oh. See you uh, later. Listen to Dark Sister, and to Old Nan. May they uh, long wield swords together. May they drink forever. Yeah. In the, All in men, the, in the women, halls. and Valerian steel. Yeah. In the halls of the great kings. Must drink. Good.